Mary Magdalene was one of Christ's disciples. She has been identified with several Marys in the Gospel. Mary, the sister of Martha and Lazarus. Mary, the sinner who washed Jesus' feet with her tears. Mary, a woman who cared for Jesus and his apostles on their journey. St. Mary Magdalene's story is intimately linked with Jesus. She plays a leading role in one of the most powerful and important scenes in the Gospels. How St. Mary Magdalene first met Jesus, we are told in the Gospel of St. Luke. St. Mary Magdalene learned that Jesus was dining one night in the house of Simon. Without waiting for an invitation or an introduction of any kind, she burst through the guests to get to him. Her only thought was to show Jesus how thorough her repentance. For Mary Magdalene, the daughter of a rich and noble family, was reputed a great sinner. The Pharisees present there believed that all sinners remained sinners. They believed that all except themselves were sinners. Mary knelt behind our Lord while he was seated and washed his feet with her tears and dried them with her hair. And kissing his feet, she anointed them with precious ointment. When Simon, the Pharisee who had invited Jesus to dinner, complained, This man, if he were a prophet, would surely know who and what kind of a woman this is who touches him, that she is a sinner. Our Lord quickly defended St. Mary Magdalene, saying, Simon, I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet, but she has washed my feet with her tears and with her hair has wiped them. You gave me no kiss, but she, since she came in, has not ceased to kiss my feet. And then our Lord uttered his glorious tribute. Wherefore I say to you, many sins are forgiven her because she has loved much. And then he said to Mary, your sins are forgiven. Your faith has made you safe. Go in peace. After her meeting with Jesus, Mary Magdalene gave herself up entirely to the service of her Lord. She became one of the holy women who followed Jesus in his travels in Galilee and up to Jerusalem. For two years, she accompanied him, listening to him preach, drinking in his words of eternal life and ministering to him and his apostles. It was Mary's great love for Christ that kept her standing at the foot of the cross, weeping and grief-stricken until her Savior died. It was her heartbreaking pain of loss that drove her to his tomb at the first light of day in order to anoint his body. She discovered that the stone had been moved away and that the tomb was empty. She was heartbroken and began to cry. A man in the garden asked her why she was crying. Mary thought the man was a gardener and told him that her Lord had been taken away. Then he said her name, Mary. Upon hearing this, Mary recognized him. She was a true saint of hope, running to tell the apostles she had seen the Lord. As a reward for her great love and faithfulness, she is the privileged person to whom Jesus first appeared on Easter Sunday morning. She was the very first witness of the resurrection. After Jesus' resurrection and ascension, Mary Magdalene continued her mission as an evangelizer, contemplative and mystic in the heart of the church. According to tradition, Mary gained an audience with the emperor Tiberius in Rome after Christ's resurrection. She denounced Pilate for the way he conducted himself at Christ's trial. Mary told the emperor about Christ and his resurrection from the dead. Holding out an egg to him, she proclaimed, Christ is risen! The emperor was not impressed. 
He told St. Mary Magdalene that there was about as much chance of a human being returning to life from the dead as there was of the egg in her hand turning red. Immediately, the egg turned red. This was a sign from God to illustrate the truth of her message. The emperor then heeded her complaints about Pilate, condemning an innocent man to death, and had Pilate removed from Jerusalem. While we do not know if these stories are true with absolute certainty, we do know that the tradition of handing out red eggs at Easter is one that originated among Christians in apostolic times, and we often find Mary Magdalene depicted in icons holding a red egg. Mary spent her remaining life visiting different towns, preaching the word of Christ, the last 30 years of her life, it is claimed, she spent in a cave high up in the mountains. The story of Mary of Magdala reminds us all of a fundamental truth, Pope Benedict said. A disciple of Christ is one who, in the experience of human weakness, has had the humility to ask for his help, has been healed by him, and has set out following closely after him becoming a witness of the power of his merciful love that is stronger than sin and death. Saint Mary Magdalene, woman of many sins, who by conversion became the beloved of Jesus, thank you for your witness that Jesus forgives through the miracle of love. You who already possess eternal happiness in his glorious presence, please intercede for me so that someday I may share in the same everlasting joy. Amen. Saints. Sorry for interrupting the video. I am here to deliver a quick message. If you think our channel has given you $5 worth of knowledge, then can you take a moment to make a donation? Please don't skip the video. 99.8% of our viewers simply skip this, or many think they will donate later and forget. If you make a small donation now, then we can keep making good videos like this one. You can choose to support us through Patreon or make a one-time donation through PayPal. The links are given in the description box below. If you are one of our rare donors, we warmly thank you. You have shown the world access to good content matters to you. Thanks again, and God bless. Saints. This is a legend unlike any other. This is the exciting story of St. Helena, mother of the Emperor Constantine, who found the cross of Christ in Jerusalem. Let us begin with some history. In AD 70, there was an insurrection from Jews and Christians. Because of this, the Roman Emperor Hadrian abolished the name of Judea and renamed the area Syria Palestina. To eradicate the influence of Christianity, Hadrian leveled the top of Mount Calvary and erected a temple to the goddess Venus. He also cut away and leveled the hillside where Jesus' tomb stood and built a temple to the pagan god Venus. Now let us learn the amazing events that led to the conversion of Helena and the rise to power of her son. The historian Procopius reports that Constantine named a city in Bithynia, Asia Minor, Helenopolis to honor her birthplace, which implies, but not with certainty, that she was born there. That location is now in Turkey. We are also not sure of her exact date of birth. Historian Eusebius of Caesarea writes that she was 80 years old on her return from Palestine. And since that journey is understood to have occurred in 326 to 328, she was probably born around 250 AD. It all started when Helena was a young servant girl. 
her full name being Flavia Julia Helena. She was no different from anyone else until the day she caught the eye of the Roman Emperor Constantius Chlorus with her beauty. She married Constantius Chlorus, who would later become co-regent of the western part of the Roman Empire. Her first and only son, Constantine, was born in Nisus in Upper Moesia in the year 274. In a few months, Constantius was raised in his ranks and was obliged to divorce or set aside Helena in order to marry Maximian's daughter, Theodora. Constantine was forever loyal to his dear mother, whom he loved very much. He grew up and soon became part of the royal circle, but he never left Helena's side. As Constantius was dying in 306, he proclaimed his son by Helena, Constantine, as his successor. Constantine took control of Rome as he rose in power. He won many battles and he expanded his reign over the years. In the year 312, Constantine was in combat with Maxentius for the throne of the Roman Empire. With many of his soldiers killed, his side was losing the battle. Constantine prayed to the Lord God of the Christians to help him in his battle. In answer to his prayer, a sign appeared in the sky. A luminous cross was seen with the words in Latin, in hoc signo vinces, which meant, by this sign, you will conquer inscribed on it. The next day, Constantine won a decisive battle over Maxentius. He became a Christian that day. Helena, too, embraced Christianity following her son's victory over Maxentius. In the following year, he legalized Christianity with the Edict of Milan. The Edict of Milan allowed for Christianity to be a freely practiced religion. Helena was granted the title of Augusta by her son, a Roman imperial honorific title given to empresses and honored women of the imperial families. Constantine ordered all to honor his mother. He even had coins minted bearing her image. With her title of Augusta, Helena was now given free reign over the imperial treasury. She became a devout servant of God and her influence helped Christianity spread throughout the empire. She had great concern for the poor, financially assisting both individuals and entire communities. In 326 to 328, Helena undertook a trip to the holy places in Palestine. On this pilgrimage, it was said that Helena followed in the footsteps of Jesus by performing many acts of kindness and good works, such as giving money, food, and clothing to the poor, and also helping churches with funds as well as other needs. During her journey, Helena had many churches constructed, including the one at the site of Jesus Christ's birth, the Church of the Nativity, Bethlehem, and another at the site of his ascension, the Church of Eleona on the Mount of Olives. After weeks of traveling, she finally made it to Jerusalem. Jerusalem was still being rebuilt following the destruction caused by Emperor Hadrian. Hadrian had a temple built over the site of Jesus' death. This temple was believed to be dedicated to Venus. Helena had this temple destroyed and chose a site in this location to be excavated. This exposed the site where Christ was crucified. There are several versions of the story on how the cross is found. In some, Helena has a dream telling her where the cross is buried. In another tradition, the Ethiopian Coptic tradition still celebrated as Mescal, she follows smoke from a bonfire to the site. They start excavating, and finally, 
they uncovered three crosses. One was thought to belong to Jesus Christ and the others belonging to the two thieves that died alongside him. To test and see which one of these crosses truly belonged to Jesus Christ, they brought a leper. The leper was instructed to touch each of the crosses one by one. He touched the first one and nothing happened. He touched the second one and still nothing happened. Finally, when he touched the third and final cross, the leper was instantly healed. It was this cross that healed the leper, and for that reason, it is known as the true cross. The cross was then carried back to Constantinople, while part of the cross was placed in the hands of the Bishop of Jerusalem. Helena had one placed in Constantine's helmet and another in the bridle of his horse. As the years passed, fragments of the true cross were placed in the care of many churches around the world for all to admire. Some stories further claim that Helena also found the nails of the crucifixion and that the nail's miraculous power were used to aid her son. St. Helena died around 330 with her dearly devoted son by her side. She was then buried in the mausoleum of Helena outside of Rome. St. Helena was renowned for helping not only individuals, but entire communities through her works of charity. She is often sought out to help the poor and destitute. She was a very devout servant of God so much so that one would easily believe her to have been a follower of Jesus Christ from birth. Through her influence and work, Christianity continued to spread throughout the known world. Holy and blessed Saint Helena, with the anguish and devotion with which you sought the cross of Christ, I plead that you give me God's grace to suffer in patience the labors of this life, so that through them and through your intercession and protection, I will be able to seek and carry the cross which God has placed upon me, so that I can serve him in this life and enjoy his glory ever after. Amen.